Was John Gotti going to murder Neil Delacroach's son? Let's check it out. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today, we're going to take a quick look at the life of Armand Delacroach, the son of powerful Gambino family underboss Neil Delacroach. Armand Buddy Delacroach was born on the 16th of July 1955 in New York. At the time of his birth, his father, Agnello Neil Delacroach, was a soldier in the crime family headed by Albert Anastasia. Neil Delacroach was in the crew of Anastasia captain Armand Tommy Raver, and Raver and Delacroach were close friends. It is speculated that Neil Delacroach named his son after his friend and captain, although the spelling of their names is different. When Armand Buddy Delacroach was three years old, his alleged namesake Armand Raver was murdered in Florida after Raver and Neil Delacroach had opposed the provisional accession of Carlo Gambino as boss of the family, replacing the slain Albert Anastasia. After Raver was murdered, Delacroach made the healthy career choice of falling in line behind Gambino, as shown in the following FBI file. Informant noted that Delacroach had been able to get himself reinstated with the Gambino contingent, who had taken over the Anastasia family. And Neil Delacroach became captain over part of Tommy Raver's old crew. By the mid-1960s, Delacroach had replaced Joseph Biondo as underboss to Carlo Gambino. And after Gambino died in 1976, Neil Delacroach would remain as underboss under the new family head, Paul Castellano. Armand Buddy Delacroach followed his father into a life of crime. And being the son of the underboss of the Gambino family evidently had its advantages, as Buddy Delacroach was inducted into the crime family in 1978 at the age of just 23, making him, at that point, the youngest inductee into the Gambino crime family since the books had reopened in January 1976. On the 12th of July 1979, the greatly feared Bonanno family mobster Carmine Galante was gunned down in Joe and Mary's Italian-American restaurant in Bushwick, Brooklyn. A hit team consisting of Russell Mauro, Anthony Bruno Indelicato and Dominic Big Trin Trinquera entered the restaurant. Big Trin handled crowd control whilst Russell Mauro and Bruno Indelicato went into the back patio where Galante was finishing lunch. Russell Mauro blasted Galante and Bruno Indelicato shot Galante's companions Joe Torano and Leonard Coppola. Galante's bodyguards Cesare Bonaventre and Baldo Amato famously did nothing to intervene and some sources state that the pair also fired some shots in the infamous hit. 45 minutes after Galante's murder over at the Ravenite Social Club in Little Italy Bonanno family mobsters Alphonse Sonny Red Indelicato, Steve Stevie Beef Canone, Joe Indelicato, Philip Philly Lucky Giacone and Anthony Bruno Indelicato are seen by an FBI surveillance team at the famous Gambino family hangout. Due to the timing of the visit, it is believed that the Bonanno family gangsters were there to inform Neil Delacroach, the Gambino underboss, that the hit on Carmine Galante had been successful. Interestingly, the following year in 1980, Neil Delacroix's son Buddy was indicted for criminal contempt by a grand jury who were investigating Galante's murder. One newspaper reported, Armand Buddy Delacroix declined to answer the jury's questions about whether he had advanced knowledge of the plot to kill Galante. The authorities believed that Neil Delacroix had ordered the hit on Carmine Galante, in part due to the famous surveillance footage at the Ravenite, and also due to a conversation that police said they heard of Buddy Delacroix speaking with Lenny Di Maria, 
just three days before the famous mob assassination. Buddy told Di Maria, I spoke to my father about it. Anyway, if I get nailed, it's entrapment because Sonny Red was taking a chance. On December the 2nd, 1985, Gambino family underboss Neil De La Croce died of cancer at the age of 71. Famously, just two weeks later, family boss Paul Castellano was gunned down outside Sparks Steakhouse. An informant later told the FBI that he had heard that Buddy De La Croce had talked with John Gotti about taking out Big Paul. It was reported, The informant learned that Armand Buddy De La Croce, son of the late Gambino underboss Agnello De La Croce, had told Gotti before the rub out, If we can get rid of Paul, then we can take over the family. Not that John Gotti, Frankie De Chico and their co-conspirators hadn't already thought that through. Earlier that year, in March 1985, Armand Buddy De La Croce had been indicted along with his father and eight other Gambino mobsters for Rico conspiracy and various other charges, including murder, gambling, usury, extortion, hijacking and fraud. The full list of those charged were Agnello De La Croce, John Gotti, John Carniglia, Eugene Gotti, Charles Carniglia, Wilfred Johnson, Anthony Rampino, Leonard Di Maria, Nicholas Carrozzo, and Armand De La Croce. However, when the indictment came down, Armand Buddy De La Croce went on the lam. He was arrested by the police over three months later in July down in Florida, where he had a new identity. Official court documents state the following. When the defendant was arrested in Florida over three months after the indictment was handed up, he was carrying a driver's license, selected service card and social security card bearing the name of John Dorm. Defendant persisted in denying that he was Armand De La Croce and insisted that he was John Dorm, even though the arresting agent repeatedly informed defendant that the agent knew his true identity. Eventually, he conceded who he was and said, you got me. Defendant had signed a lease for an apartment in Florida and made a down payment on the rent. A search of that apartment revealed, among other things, two loaded semi-automatic weapons and approximately $3,000 in cash. Telephone records indicate that shortly after the indictment was handed up, numerous telephone calls were placed to and from the home of Agnello De La Croce, defendant's father, and a co-defendant in this case to and from locations near where defendant was arrested in Florida. Counsel for defendant essentially admitted the defendant was aware of the indictment and chose to go to Florida rather than remain in the jurisdiction. Buddy De La Croce and the other defendants were facing a trial sometime the following year relating to the RICO indictment. And then, on the 2nd of December 1985, as mentioned, Neil De La Croce died, removing him from the trial. And... Just four days after his father's death, Armand Buddy De La Croce pleaded guilty to the charges he was facing. Pleading guilty went against what all the other defendants were doing. Buddy De La Croce was at the time out on $250,000 bail and due to hand himself in for sentencing in March 1986. However, the 31-year-old De La Croce didn't show. He had gone on the run yet again. One newspaper reported, Facing 20 years imprisonment and a $25,000 fine, Mr. De La Croce disappeared four days before he was to be sentenced in Federal District Court in Brooklyn. A condition of his bail was that he report daily by telephone to the court and twice a week in person, and before he fled, he had been reporting. Upon Mr. De La Croce's failure to appear for sentencing, Judge Eugene H. Nickerson issued a bench warrant for his arrest and revoked his $250,000 bond. So, was it just the prospect of receiving a 20-year sentence that made Buddy De La Croce go on the run? Or was it something else? Pleading guilty in the case when John Gotti and the other defendants were pleading not guilty may well have put a target 
on Buddy Delacroach's back. Federal Prosecutor Diane F. Jackalone emphasised that Buddy Delacroach had entered the guilty plea without any agreement to testify against the other defendants. However, sources indicate that John Gotti was furious that Buddy had entered a guilty plea, especially as Buddy's admission of guilt could be used against Gotti and the other defendants in the RICO trial. And history shows us that it actually was. As one newspaper reported, at the time, Armand Buddy Delacroche was running for his life after pleading guilty to the same racketeering charges that Gotti was on trial for because prosecutors used Delacroche's guilty plea against Gotti. Another newspaper added, Law enforcement sources said that Gotti was very upset that Delacroche had pleaded guilty to the racketeering charges and that Buddy knew it. In addition, Buddy Delacroche had a substance abuse problem that would have made him appear weak and a liability in the eyes of Gotti, regardless of who Buddy's father had been and what he meant to Gotti. In 1987, John Gotti and the other defendants were actually acquitted at the RICO trial. But the mob doesn't forget. Buddy Delacroach was in hiding in the Poconos area of Pennsylvania. He was living in a condominium with an unidentified woman and going under the name of Frank Trainer. However, on April the 4th, 1988, after two years on the run, Buddy Delacroach died at the age of of just 33. He passed away in a Pennsylvania hospital after a cerebral hemorrhage brought on by alcohol cirrhosis, essentially drinking himself to death. Buddy Delacroach's autopsy also revealed that the young mobster tested positive for AIDS. US investigator Victor Aboisky of the Eastern District of New York now faced a new problem. It was reported I have two problems, Aboisky said. Finding people who helped him and finding people who may have had sexual contact with him or shared a needle with him. It's a double-edged sword. Armand Buddy Delacroach's demise was summed up by one law enforcement official who said, The mob was going to get him. The marshals were going to get him. But in the end, he got himself. Later that year, on his birthday on July the 16th, a note appeared in the In Memoriam section of the Daily News. It reads, Delacroach, Armand, Buddy. I miss you more than words can say. You're on my mind night and day. Happy birthday, honey. I love you always, Antoinette. Do you think John Gotti would have killed Buddy Delacroach? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.